Timer instruction is a very common instruction used in ladder logic programming. Timers are used to delay actions or to keep an output on or off for a specific time. This is the configuration of a typical PLC timer instruction, and it has the following parts. A timer name or a timer address, timer base, preset value, and accumulated value. Let's see what each part is. A timer name is the timer unique identifier in the PLC memory. No matter what brand of PLC, each timer will have a name or a number to identify it. Depending on the PLC type, there is a certain way to write the name. An example is one of the Ellen Bradley PLC address is T40. T and then the timer file number and finally the timer element number. So T40 is timer file 4, timer element 0. Every timer has a timer base. Timers are typically programmed with a several different timer bases. The timer base is also referred to as the timer accuracy. The timer base specifies at what rate the timer will increment. So depending on the time base, as a PLC programmer, you can specify the preset value. For example, if you want to have a three second delay, then you need to check what's the time base of the timer instruction that this particular PLC software deals with. So if the time base is 0.001 second, and you want it to program a three second delay, then the number to put in the preset value is 3 divided by 0.001, and this equals to 3000. The equation is that the desired time delay equals the preset value times the time base. Here's another example. If a programmer enters 0.1 for the time base and 50 for the number of delay increments, the timer would have a 5 second delay. 50 times 0.1 equals 5 second. Timers must have a preset value. The preset value is the number of time increments the timer must count before changing the state of the output, and it depends on the time base as we mentioned. So simply, a timer preset value is the length of the time for which the timer is to run, while the time base specifies at what rate the timer will increment. Finally, the accumulated value indicates the time increments accumulated when the timer rung and instruction are active. Timers are an output instruction. Timers are usually added in the right-hand side. And the timer starts timing when the run condition is true. So if there is no input, the timer will start timing as soon as the rung is true. If we add an input, for example a switch, once the switch is on, the rung is true and as a result, the timer starts timing. A timer resets with a change in the rung condition. So if the rung is true, the timer starts timing. Once the rung goes false, the accumulator resets. So if we don't have any input, then the timer will not reset unless the wrong goes to false. But once we add an input, then the timer starts timing when the input is true, and once the input goes false, the timer resets. Here's a simple example of using a switch as an input and a timer as an output. The timer base, for simplicity, I'll use one, and the preset value is five seconds. So once the switch is turned on, the rung becomes true, and then the timer starts timing until it reaches the preset value. Once the timer reaches the preset value, then it stops accumulating because the accumulated value equals the preset. Then in order to reset the timer, the way to do it is to turn off the switch. Once the switch is turned off, the run goes to false and there is a change in the run condition and the timer accumulated value resets. And to start the timer again, simply turn on the switch.